In this video, I will show you how to estimate the kinetic energy of electrons given the electron density in density functional theory. We will use a simplified model. Let's confine n electrons, uppercase n here, in a three-dimensional cubic box with dimensions of a by a by a. And then the volume is a cubed. The electron density is n over a cubed. The kinetic energy of each electron can be expressed as h squared over 8ma squared times the sum of nx squared, ny squared, and nz squared. h is the Planck constant, m is the mass of an electron, a is the dimension of the cube. Nx, Ny, and Nz are quantum numbers of the particle in the box problem. They have to be positive integers. Now because electrons occupy the lowest energy levels first, we can easily compute the upper limit of Nx, Ny, and Nz, and this can be explained using a two-dimensional example. So let's say we have a two-dimensional box with two quantum numbers, Nx and Ny. Nx and Ny can be 1 and 1, or 1 and 2, or 2 and 1, or 2 and 2, or 3 and 1, or 1 and 3, and 4 and 1, 3 and 2, 2 and 3, and uh, you, can, you can see the trend. Really, these numbers are or the sum of nx squared and ny squared. nx and ny are positive integers. So let's say we have a total of 100 electrons, and then they should occupy 50 energy levels. So really, we just need to find a arc that encloses 50 data points here. So over here, if we look at this arc, this arc is, uh, has a radius of 8. We just count the number of data points enclosed in the arc. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And if you count all the data points enclosed uh, inside this arc, it's about 41. And then if the radius is large enough, there is an easy way to estimate the number of data points enclosed in the arc which is just a quarter of the area of this entire circle with such a radius. Why so? If you look at each data point, actually each data point occupies one unit of area. So basically we just need to compute the total area of the cycle of a, a circle with this radius. And then we take just one fourth of the circle, that's going to be the number of data points enclosed within this arc, or it's the number of energy levels. So again, this is a two-dimensional example. We can compute the radius of the arc, uh, which is the square root of nx squared plus ny squared, and the number of energy levels is therefore just one-fourth of the area of the circle, which is pi times n max squared. What is a max? A max is the radius of the arc. Again, this is because each data point or each energy level occupies one unit area. You can just imagine a, a one by one uh, square around each data point. Similarly, the number of energy levels enclosed in one of the eight octants of a sphere is one eighth times the volume of the um, quantum number volume. It's not a really physical volume. It's made of Nx, Ny, and Nz as the three dimensions. But the formula to compute the volume is still 4 pi over 3 times the radius cubed. The radius in this case is the N max. N sub max is the upper limit of Nx, Ny, and Nz. So we can do that, and uh, over here, this is the formula to compute n sub max. Now let's say we have n electrons. They will occupy the first n over 2 energy levels. 
And again, remember, we're not talking about the entire sphere. We're talking about just one eighth of the sphere because n x, n y, and n z must be positive. Therefore, two over n. That's the number of data points enclosed in this one all positive octant, which is equal to the volume of that octant, which is one eighth times the volume of the sphere of quantum numbers. And then we simplify this. We get n max, the upper limit of n x, n y, and n z, to be three n over pi. To the power of one third. Again, this n max is also the radius of the sphere of the three quantum numbers. Again, it's not a real physical volume; it's a volume with three dimensions of quantum numbers. Why do we need this? Now we can use this to compute the average kinetic energy for each electron. What we do is we use something similar to quantum mechanical postulates to compute the weighted average of a、uh, physical property. So we have this on top.、Uh, this expression r squared times h squared over eight m a squared over here is the kinetic energy of the electron. R squared equals n x squared plus n y squared plus n z squared. And on the bottom, this is just to normalize this、uh, weighted average kinetic energy. So we just need to compute this. Now we have a lower limit of zero for R. We have an upper limit, which is uh, this uh, max over here. Three、uh, n over pi to the power one third is the upper limit of this R. So we、uh, evaluate this triple integrals. Fortunately, the integral of theta. Cancels the integral of this phi also cancel. Therefore, we have simply the integral of this r to the power of four on top, and then the integral of r to the power of two on the bottom. Of course, we have a constant here, which is h squared over eight m a squared, and then we just need to integrate this. It's very easy. The result is here, and then we simplify the formula. And in the end, we get zero point zero three two seven two seven three times h squared over m times rho to the power of two thirds. And rho is the electron density. It's n over v, the number of electrons divided by the volume of the container of the electrons. So again, rho is the electron density. Now we can actually、uh, express the total energy or total kinetic energy per unit volume in this way. This is the average kinetic energy of the electrons, multiplied by the number of electrons divided by the total volume. We have the kinetic energy per unit volume, and then if you pay attention here, n over v is simply the electron density. Therefore, now we have this number: zero point zero seven two seven three times h squared over m, times rho to the power of five thirds. So this is rho to the power of two thirds. That's the average kinetic energy of the electrons. And then we have actually the total kinetic energy per unit volume. Therefore, we have one additional rho here, coming from n over v. And then this rho to the power of two thirds coming from the average kinetic energy per electron, and then in the end we see this、uh, total energy per unit volume is proportional to rho to the power of five thirds, and then we can convert it to atomic units. In atomic unit system, the mass of an electron is one, and each bar is one. However, we have h squared here, so we need to convert h to two pi times h bar, and then we have this expression. Very simple: the kinetic energy of electrons per unit volume is 2.871 times the electron density to the power of five thirds. Ah,、uh, is this accurate? I don't know. Let's use the hydrogen atom as an example. 
because we know the exact wave function of the hydrogen atom, we know the exact kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy of the hydrogen atom. The wave function is pi to the power of negative one half times e to the power of negative r. This is normalized. And then if we take the squared modulus of a wave function, we will get the exact electron density, which is pi to the power of negative one times e to the power of negative two r. So fortunately, we know the exact electron density for the electron in the hydrogen atom. It's this, again, e to the power of negative 2r divided by pi. So given this exact electron density, we can estimate its kinetic energy using this formula. So this is what we do. This is the kinetic energy per unit volume. And then we integrate this with respect to d tau. d tau is the volume element. And then we simply just integrate this whole thing. d tau is r squared sine theta times dr d theta d phi. So you probably want to review uh, this multivariable calculus to understand why this d tau is r squared times sine theta times dr d theta d phi. Again, I just plug in the expression of rho here. And then to the power of rho to the power of 5 thirds, I got this expression. And after this uh, integration, uh, we get a number 0 0.289. I skipped a few steps, but the integral of sine theta d theta is very simple. The result is simply 2. The integral of d phi is simply 2 pi. So that's why we have this two pi, uh, 4 pi here, 2 times 2 pi. And then I took this constant out of integral here. And then we just need to integrate e to the power of negative 10 r over 3 times r squared. I used Wolf, Wolfram alpha to compute this integral. The result of this integral is 0 0.054. You may just click this uh, URL to get the result here. And again, I got 0 0.289. We know the exact kinetic energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom is 0 0.5 atomic unit. So the percent error is negative 42%. This is fairly large, but this error can be reduced. If we take the spatial gradient of the electron density into account as well.